Hey, Hermes. We're going to take a look at a little black Mustang that I have been working with and gentling and show you her journey. I wanted to show you some of the beginning clips first, just to kind of show you how flighty she was. She is the little black horse that you'll notice whenever she gets close to the human, she's really running away and kind of staying on the far side and tends to be the horse that is most towards the back and is the one that is uh, very quick to kind of run off and the story behind her is so she's I guess technically would be a four strike horse all horses to come to uh, Canada Mustangs to come to Canada they are what are called three strike horses which means that they have um, been rejected three times like they were offered at a auction or a training challenge and nobody chose them and so in this case, what happened is I made a post on Facebook and I said, hey, is there anybody that would like to choose a Mustang? I'm going down to get one for myself anyways. And would anybody else want one? And so I had uh, a few people that wrote to me and three people who firmed up and gave deposits. And uh, one person put a chose this black horse and gave a deposit. And then after, like, I think it was just a couple days before I was driving down, they messaged me to say that they no longer wanted her, even though they put a deposit down and the Coggins and paperwork had already been pulled by the vet, which I'd already paid for. So I said, well, at this point, like they've already paid for the paperwork and whatnot. There's nothing, you know, like I may as well just bring the horse back because we're not getting a refund on that paperwork. So I brought her home and she didn't do anything for the longest time we went and we gave grass but she she didn't have anything done with her because I thought maybe somebody else would take her I posted her as available I tried to get rid of her and nobody wanted her um, I offered her to some other Mustang trainers and whatnot and uh nobody wanted her so it's like all right I guess I'm gonna start working with you and once I started working with her she has trained really really fast and uh, she almost flipped a switch where she was kind of scared and defensive and then she just kind of flipped a switch where she was like you know what I trust you and it was really really easy so she sat at her farm and basically didn't do anything for Oh, probably, probably four weeks or so. And then this footage here is at the end of her first week of training where I was like, okay, we better get doing something. And she's actually going to end up being the horse that I take with me to Maryland and into the States. I'm about to go on a tour to the USA. And so she's going to come with me and she's going to end up going to Maryland. So normally for these tip challenges and this here you're going to see a moment where she was still flighty in her first uh, this was her first leading session where we were doing some leading and touching and you can see she just gets overwhelmed with me being on her right side and she leaves pretty softly but then when she feels the rope around her like on her butt then she kind of panics a little bit and then I have to get the rope tossed over her head and she kind of runs past me again and she gets really upset and I just wanted to show you in the video how when stuff happens, you can really build a lot of trust with the horse as long as you don't raise the energy and get them all anxious and upset. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, whatever, it's fine. I'll just softly pick up the rope again. And I can see she's really panicking and she's really upset. So I'm just focusing on my breathing and just asking her to stay focused on me. But I'm not advancing in the situation. It's just like, hey, let's just breathe, take a moment and just settle. And so she's going to be coming to Maryland with me. Normally for these training challenges, they do them in 90 days or 100 days. In my case, I'm going to have literally, I think it's either four to five weeks. I haven't done the exact math on the number of days, but we're, we're going to be looking at four to five weeks of training to go down to Maryland instead of the, the typical 12 weeks that you would have. So we've got less than half the training time to be able to go down. And we're, we're probably not going to be able to pull off as cool a freestyle as what some other people are going to be able to do because we are not anywhere near asking for a lay down or a sit or 
Liberty, we might be able to do some stuff at Liberty. I'm not really sure where that's going to be, but here's a little look at, this was me just starting to teach her how to back up and come forward. You can see I'm using grass for positive reinforcement, but she will probably be able to do well at the actual patterns. I, I'm thinking that those are going to go pretty well. And it will be really interesting to see what we can accomplish in less than half the time. And I'm going to end up taking her and not my horse that I chose. I'll do a separate video where you guys can see the other horse that I chose, which is named Paisley. And uh, Paisley has other things going on that I will have to share with you guys in the next video about her. But back to this little girl. So we, we've worked for the the one week we made a lot of progress and this is me practicing approaching her and catching her so in one week we did touching we did our first leading we worked on catching we started to work on what I call the ABCs which is a horse's basic language so forwards backwards moving hips shoulders, all that kind of stuff, kind of moving different body parts. Just in, we did that in the most basic kind of form. And you can see she let me approach her there, catch her pretty easily there. And we're doing a little bit of leading, which is pretty exciting. And so once they can do that, where they're pretty easy to catch and you can lead, then that's when I'm ready to take them out of the pen. And I'll show you guys that in a second here, her first time ever out of the pen was crazy awesome and because we're down to um, just this one Mustang I'm focusing on I was able to spend a lot of time with her which is great so we spent like I think this particular session was about two hours we went out and we did hand grazing we traveled around and then at the end I took her in the indoor arena this is her first time ever in the indoor arena her first time ever leading out of the pen so keep in mind that I did about a two-hour session with her so we did lots of hand grazing outside traveling from one spot to another so even though it's a it was a two-hour session it's not that she was mentally exhausted or physically exhausted during that that was a lot of time just hanging out moving from one spot to another getting grass and then this is a look at her first time inside and she's actually mostly hesitating here because she's walking past Ali who is filming and she wasn't so sure about walking past Allie because we, before we turned on the camera to film a little clip of this, she walked through the whole, we've passed the barrels, no problem. And here I'm just going to give her a little rub and then we'll go back and do that again. And this is going to be crazy what she does on her first ever time. Uh, just wait a minute after we finish the barrels and then you'll see what I mean. Uh, so here I kicked over the barrel. So I just started to see, you know, what kind of a reaction she would have. And I love that, that. You know, I kick over the barrel and she had a little bit of a scramble, but she stopped. She thought about it and she didn't actually take off and go running anywhere. And she's just kind of going slowly past it. And she's like, all right, so the barrels move. They're not fixed. And you just have to imagine being in the horse's perspective right now. Her whole mind must be totally blown. Like this is totally unlike anything she's ever seen before. And look at that. I tip over the next barrel and she's like, okay, I got it. The barrels, they tip over, even though she's never seen anything like this ever before in her life. And it's like, all right, and there it goes up again. She's like, okay, not the end of the world. So she's really cool to work with. I think she's probably very similar to Elon in that she's a thinker. She definitely loves to think. And she almost is about, I would say she's very similar in her quietness as Kaibu. Maybe not as quiet as Kaibu, Quiet like Kaibu was ridiculous, but this, this one's pretty darn close. She's very, she seems very um, brave and very able to find her parasympathetic nervous system and kind of control that flight reflex. And so this is, this is crazy here. This is the first time I brought her over to the noodles. I was like, you know what, let's do something for the first time while Allie's filming and this is going to let you kind of see how she thinks and see how brave she is. So she's kind of, you know, looking, she's thinking. This is why I say she's kind of like Elon is she's a horse that if you kind of give her a second to think about it, 
you can tell the wheels are kind of turning and she's assessing the situation. And I just kind of wait and I'm politely nudging, suggesting, hey, do you think you could try coming forward? And she kind of inches her way forward a little bit. And then I'll give her some time to think a little bit. And then I'll ask, you see, I can, I'm drawing with my body. I'm putting very light pressure on the rope because we have to be careful about if you're pulling on a horse or trying to get them to do something, you can do pressure. Pressure and release is okay. But if you use excessive pressure, like if the horse starts to brace on you and you start to really pull on them, you actually can start to panic them. And then you have the opposite effect of getting them to do the thing that you're looking for. And instead you just get an explosive reaction. So you can put a little bit of pressure on and you can pull a little bit to suggest, hey, like come forward. But I don't really want to lean into that rope and, and pull on them and be in a situation where it's intense. And then look at that. She just like really calmly walks through. Now, granted, the pool noodles are just up high. They're not down low in this scenario, but how cool is that that she just walked right through that totally different than what she's ever seen and uh, she just goes right through you can see they move when I go through because I'm tall and she's like oh look they barely they barely touch me so I'm really excited for her um she's super amazing so wish us luck